Hi everyone, my name is Ryan and welcome back to the Syntax Byte. In this video, we're going to discuss converting a JSON file to a CSV or kind of rather making a CSV from the data in a JSON file using Node.js. I like this method for going from JSON to CSV because it's really flexible because JSON is the native uh, sort of data format of JavaScript. So once you import it into the JavaScript, it's really easy to play around with the data and make any modifications necessary before saving it as CSV. There are some GUI tools out there that could do a similar thing, uh, but just with the flexibility, I find this method is, is attractive in a lot of cases, and it's only about 20 lines of code to get where you're going. So before we get started here, my, the JSON file I'm gonna be working with today is this forecast.json I have on my system. This is an API response that I downloaded uh, and I want to pull a CSV out of it. I'm only going to work with the forecast and I'm going to work with the hourly forecast, which is right here. So I'm not going to work with any of the astrology stuff. I don't care about the day stuff. So um, I'm going to be diving into this forecast object and then forecast day. Uh, which is an array and we're going to grab the hourly forecast from the first day in the response which I believe is also the only day in the response and we're going to pick out some of these variables to be columns in our CSV file and we'll discuss how we can get at this condition and deal with the nested variables really easily. So the first thing you want to do before you start working with the script is to install the CSV writer library. So you could go npm install csv writer and that will just take a brief minute to install and so it's added one package and now if we do a quick ls in the directory we should have a node modules in the directory if we didn't before you could also install this globally by just installing it to the directory for now given that so the first thing that we need to do when we start writing our script is to include the file system so you can do const and then I'm gonna do promises FS here and what that is gonna allow us to do is use uh, async await instead of using callbacks with the file system here so I just prefer the async await syntax so you can import this however else you may have seen on the internet if you if you don't want to use that syntax next thing is we're going to import the create csv writer function from the csv writer library that we just installed and that's under csv writer and then create object csv writer the next thing we're going to do is create the actual CSV writer. So I'm going to specify this as CSV writer is create CSV writer. And first you specify the path. So this is where you want to save the CSV file. I'm just going to save it as forecast.csv. The next thing you want to specify is the header. And so if, if you want a header in your CSV, Basically, if you don't want a header, what you can specify is the field names uh, that you're going to be working with. So I could specify, you know, temp C, temp F, for instance. But I may also want these as header names in my CSV file. And you can also change the header. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little trick here using the map function because what you have to do is if you want to have a header but you also want the names to be the same you'd have to write them out twice because if you want a header line a header row in your CSV so doing it like this you won't get a header row you'll just get the values of these from from the array that you gave it uh, put in put in your CSV file but if you want a header what you need is you need an array of objects where each one has an ID which tells it what the name is in JavaScript and a title, which is what the title will be in your CSV. In my case, I'm okay with these names, so I want them to be the same, so that's a bit cumbersome to, to write that out like that, but it's not too bad if I just use the map hack. So what I can do is on the end of this array, I can map it and do item, and then I'm gonna return an object where the ID is item and the title is item, okay? So that will preserve the header row 
At the same time, I'll get a header row with all the same names for the variables as I had in JavaScript. But of course, this is an opportunity if you want. You can manually specify out an array of objects, each with their own ID and title, if you want to change the titles. However, in my case, I'm okay with these titles, so I'm just gonna keep them like that. So we got temp C, temp F. That's cool. So that's basically what we need to do from that perspective. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an async function. I'm gonna call it main. Now I know usually in JavaScript we don't use a main function. The reason I'm doing this is I can't use the async await syntax outside of an async function. It won't take it. Uh, so I need to be inside of an async function. And normally I wouldn't create any functions at all in this script, but by creating a main function and then calling it immediately, it gets around that restriction. So the first thing I need to do is I need to load in the file data. So I'm gonna call file data equals await fs.readfile. And I need to specify the name of my file. So I have forecast.json. The next thing I'm gonna do is this is a one-liner in uh, JavaScript and this is why I like working with it for this particular task is I'm gonna do a JSON parse of file data. And that will bring the data inside my JSON in as native JavaScript objects inside the memory of my program. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a try catch. This is just to catch any errors with the CSV writing. Um, we need error. log error and we can do an await csv writer dot write records and what I'm going to do is so it's always important to keep in mind the structure of your JSON file and I probably should have discussed this earlier but be aware of you know where are you where is the data that you want to import into the CSV and it may not be the entire file you know all this stuff up here about location I don't care about any of that it's important to keep in mind that JSON and CSV are very different file formats. So it's difficult to just go from one to the other because JSON is a mix of objects and arrays and CSV is essentially one long array of a single object type, uh, fundamentally. So unless, there's not really a good way I can put this information in unless I want to attach it to every row, but I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip it. I also don't care about the daily forecast or the astronomy information. But what I am looking for is this hourly forecast. So this down here is my array and each, each index in this array is gonna represent a row in my CSV. And then I'm gonna take some of this data and put it in my CSV. There's a lot of data here, so I'm just gonna bypass some of it. But we'll, but we'll take a few variables and then I'll show you how to get at these ones that are nested here uh, so that you can get those in too. So what I need to do is I need to navigate from my parse, I need to go to the forecast, then to the forecast day, which is an array. I'm just gonna select index zero, I'm gonna specify that. Then I wanna pick the hour, and I wanna pass it in this hour array, and then the CSV writer will do the rest. So I can go parsed data dot forecast dot forecast day zero and then dot hour so that is the array and remember i've specified up here the variables that it's going to pull out of each one of those array objects and put into a row for me and i've specified that i want a header row because i've used objects so so just be aware i mean it, it kind of does the rest of it for you it's it's really quite a simple process but you have to be aware of how to navigate to where you want in the file and where that array is so if I go ahead and save that now, I should have a very simple CSV with temp C and temp F. You know, why don't we go ahead and add time? I think there's a time in there. And so we, we can put a time to these variables and uh, we'll, we'll get our hourly forecast in CSV format. So let's just go ahead and do node make csv.js. And it doesn't like me because there's an unexpected token. Ah, okay, so what happens here is when we're returning an object, normally this would be the body of the method. 
if you put in curly braces here. But if you just want to straight up return an object from a lambda like that, you have to put it in parentheses. So that's what I did wrong. I'll give it another try. And it appears to have worked. Let's go ahead and see if we can open up this uh, forecast.csv. Let's just go ahead and edit it with Notepad. Okay. And so we can see here that we did, we did in fact get the time. It, it gives us a, a string format time. That's okay. Uh, and it gives us the temperature in Celsius and the temperature in Fahrenheit. So the last thing I want to show you here before I shut the video down for the day is how to get at these ones that are conditioned here. So the key is to specify a header ID delimiter when you create the CSV writer and then use that delimiter. So the, nat the natural one for me is to do condition.text and use the dot just as if I were accessing it from JavaScript. So that's how I would access it in JavaScript. So that's the most natural for me. But you could pick whatever you want. You could do position slash, you could do position, you know, but I think condition.text works okay. Let me do a header ID delimiter of dot. And that will let it know to use the dot to dig one level deeper. And of course that would go in your ID. Now, because I'm using my IDs as my titles, I'm going to get that in my title, but you can see my other ones are underscore. And I think if I just replace that with an underscore, it's going to make more sense. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do replace period with underscore in any of my titles. And I'm able to keep the neat map and anywhere where I'm digging deeper, I'm going to put a period to tell it what to do. But then when I get the header printed out, I want, I want the underscore. And so if we do that and we go ahead and run it again, should overwrite the CSV file. So just be aware of that as well. If you, if you get a good result and you're still playing around, maybe just save it somewhere else. And you can see we have time, temp C, temp F, condition text, and the condition is in there. So with that, I think that's all I wanted to share with you today. If you enjoyed the video, definitely give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more. I do lots of sort of data conversion stuff, Excel tutorials and, and all, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, be sure to uh, drop a comment below. I'll try my best to help out and have a good day guys.